Buckle up for another episode of Ghost Facers, a Supernatural Rewatch podcast. My name is Richard, and sitting shotgun, as always, is my brother in podcasting, Reed. I'm back. We could do the podcast. Wait, what do you mean you're back? Oh, I killed myself. <laughs> I mean, we was always is heading Is this that good right? for comedy? Uh, it, yeah, you being dead and now... But I'm back now. But you're back. What's the difference? Time heals all wounds. What are you going to do? How has this changed the podcast? Uh, I didn't think this far into the bit. <laughs> Let's see where it goes. Let's get into it. Ghost! Ghost Facers! The Missy Ghost! We're not just we're not! We're the Ghost! Ghost Facers! Stay in the kitchen when the kitchen gets hot! Ghost! Ghost Facers! The Missy Nightmare! The Missy Dream! Ghost! Ghost Facers! We face it faceless! We face it dead! Welcome to Ghost Facers. Today we're discussing Season 5, Episode Number 15, Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. Yeah. Baby. Can't jump. Oh, Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid and Can't Jump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this episode aired March 25th, 2010. Break. Big jump. A big yeah. break, like uh, over a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, written by, I mean, another legend here. Jeremy Carver. Hell yeah. Ben Edlin, Jeremy Carver. We yeah. back, back to back. I love that. Nice. Uh, written by, or directed by John F. Showalter. Viewed by an estimated 2.95 million viewers. Whoa. We're very close to three. Big again. jump. Yeah. Not really sure what was the cause of that, but. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe that break helped them. I don't know. Maybe they recognized it was the summer of Sam. I mean, yeah, probably. What's crazy is that, like, next season. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Well, Summers of Sam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I slightly miscalculated when the season six would start for us. Yes, but yes, yes. Uh, probably not until okay. September or so. Eh, whatever. It's yeah. an extended summer of Sam. Oh, yeah. yeah things are going to get hot even when it gets cold. Yeah. And then the... Even when he gets cold. Oh, shit. Oh my God! A little, little sneak peek. Uh, all right, let's look at the promo for this week's episode. Sure. Maybe that's indicative of what's going on here. I don't. I don't hate it. It's. It's fine. There, there, there's no over. There's no voice going over top of it. There's no music. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's fine. It works. I think. I think they would be better served by showing more of that. The town is like cool with some. yeah like i think that's the more interesting hook of the episode is to show like you know the the family with the kid to yeah, show yeah. you know the the dad back at home like zombies is fun though like zombies is fun it works but they're kind of giving away the thing whereas the tension of the episode is like maybe this time it's fine yeah right yeah. so it yeah but, I mean, it clearly worked. They got a bunch of people watching. Totally. So Yeah. Uh, well, so, The Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. This episode title gets its name from the movie, right. Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, from 1982, starring, starring Steve Martin. In the movie, Steve Martin's character interacts with characters from old black and white movies. These include Suspicion from 1941, Notorious from 1946, The Bribe from 1949, The Postman Always Rings Twice from 1946, and Double Indemnity from 1944, oh, and Deception from 1946. Yes. Um, yeah, so cool. Have you seen that movie? Uh, Dead Man's Over Plaid? Yeah. Years ago. Yeah, forever good movie. ago, yeah. Um, we got one who didn't get it this week. Okay, Hungary? That's right. All right. Okay, is this one this one's called uh uh damn, these are good dead pies. Uh no. Uh it's I think they didn't have a word for plaid. Oh, dead men don't wear uh intersecting lines. Uh not that specific broader, but uh patterns? It, no, it's, don't wear patterns. Uh, dead men don't wear suit jacket. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah if you see multiple dead men they're not wearing one suit jacket yeah no, no, no. like muppet style like yeah three, no, ridiculous. three dead guys in a trench coat no no dead men don't wear suit jacket of course uh featured music from this episode we have loving the sin i'm in by terry campbell sure uh, TV Guide describes this episode as Sam and Dean visit Bobby's hometown, where the dead are returning to life and reuniting with their families. 
But soon the zombies turn evil and Bobby is faced with having to kill his undead wife. Again. I know. Yeah, they don't even say that. Well, she wasn't undead the lot first time. Yeah, but he did kill her. Yes. yes. A boo boy. A boo boy. That's right. Uh, but before we start talking about this episode, why don't we open up Dad's journal and learn about some of the real world lore? Yeah, let's see what the lore says about resurrection. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. It's the only time of erection I have. Come on, man. <laughs> have some goddamn respect. Yeah. I just put two fingers in it. <laughs> You think, did I, sorry, did I say what see what the lore says about ketchup? <laughs> uh, a totally normal thing to have said. Yeah, yeah. It's not like we just said that 20 minutes ago. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You're listening to this a week apart. But not for us. Not how we're recording it's very this. fresh. Uh, too fresh, yeah. some might say. Two fingers fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we deserve to be alone. Yep. Um, but we're not, so why don't you talk about the lore? So, put resurrections. Si- put simply... Resurrection refers to returning to life after death. Um, Many religious traditions include some belief in resurrection in some form. So in ancient Greek, uh, be like, or sorry, ancient Egyptian, rather, there's like Osiris and like Baal, uh, although that might be Canaanite. Uh, But, you know, a lot of these religions have resurrection as part of like the stories of their deities, you know, Achilles, Memnon, even Jesus Christ who is t- technically God. Right. Yeah. That's the weird thing with the Trinity is that he's supposed to be all of it. He's God's son, but he's also God. Weird. He's, yeah. I don't I would be lying if I said I fully understood it. Um, sorry, uh, Christians, for me butchering your religion. I'm not. Yeah, you're right. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> um, in the Bible, beyond the resurrection of Christ, uh, there's also a bunch of like uh, resurrections as miracles. So some, I think of the apostles or saints, have like resurrection stories. Christ resurrects other people, including Lazarus, where we get... Lazarus Pit. Well, yeah, in comics, if you know the Lazarus Pits, they're named. Yeah, that's uh, named for that story. And sure. anytime you see Lazarus that's used in fiction, it's referring to the idea of coming back from the dead because that's a, a big uh, biblical story. Um, in the Book of Revelation, it said that the resurrection of the dead is part of the apocalypse. Uh, it's known as the Day of Judgment. That uh, the the dead will uh, rise and you know be judged again or whatever. In um, in earlier eras and through the Middle Ages in Christianity, they generally subscribe to the idea of like a literal physical resurrection. Okay. You come back, your body comes back. Mm-hmm. And even though there's definitely still people out there that believe in that, mm-hmm. there's been a bit of a shift to being a little bit more like metaphysical, like a resurrection of your soul or you know something a little maybe less literal about like your body coming out of the ground kind of thing. Um, although in the Quran, it's very specifically like, there's a lot of talk of bodily resurrection, which is kind of interesting. Um, okay. I want to talk a little bit about technological resurrection. So the Ooh. idea of trying to revive, uh, people through technology. So there, this is, um, a version of resurrection, it would be like cryonics, right? The idea of like taking someone who's like terminally ill, fully freezing them uh, to the point where I guess, you know, you know, you're the idea is you're slowing processes down. They're not dead, but you're slowing them down. Or maybe they just died. You freeze them and preserving them until such a time as technology or medicine or whatever allows you to bring them back, thaw them out, bring them back. Um, it's, um, in the main scientific community, it's regarded with uh, skepticism. Um, it's not really considered a legitimate science, although there are extremely expensive services that you could pay to freeze you. It's a thing that exists. That was the rumor about Walt Disney and shit like that and all those sort of things. Um, there are scientists, including a Russian uh, named uh, Nikolai uh, Fyodorov, who uh, said that you could use science to um, to resurrect people. He had a theory that you could like you could use the genetic material of descendants to help clone new bodies for uh, for ancestors. Okay. 
and then he believed in a thing that I'm going to kind of butcher here, um, which is that you could give them back their mind and personality because he had a theory of a thing called radial images that contain the personalities of people and survive after death. So some, he basically believed that some of these things that we consider to be a little intangible mm. are imprinted in some way, either genetically or physically or whatever, and you could record them, transcribe them, and put them back. Wow. Um, he was uh, considered... Uh, bonkers, cuckoo's uh, nuts. Bonkers, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and he had this theory that, like, through science, eventually technology would be good enough we could like master the forces of decay and stuff like that and just like I mean stop. that is the that that thing stuff, that's going on now. And technically that is true, yes. but it's like should we and do we want to? Yes. You know, we are, should. are you answering? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean I can't I can't think of a worse hell than just like continuing to live. But it's less about <laughs> ha like being forced to, but giving the option to, to end it whenever you feel like it. I don't I think everyone eventually would live to regret it. Yeah, but then you could just cut the cord. It's not like you're choosing immortality. You're choosing to live as long as you want. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think we should give people that choice. <laughs> In that way. If they want out early, give them that choice. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. We should never give them the choice for... I think if we've, like, expanded... Although that's dangerous thinking, too. <laughs> Be like, we shouldn't let them have organ transplants or things like... Nope, it's your time. <laughs> I think that if we have the ability to expand beyond the Earth and we have, like, other planets that we have and, and, like, there's more space, fucking go nuts. Well, yeah, you know, that idea of, like, cryonics or something like that, especially, like, deep space travel. We're never going to travel that close to the speed of light. So even getting to the next... I mean, I don't know if that's true, but... I think it's, like, by our understanding of the laws of physics, mostly impossible. I mean, that's continuously being changed by our understanding of physics. But uh, also, like, there's ways to fold space in which that we like like that you're saying that like we're just sitting on it we haven't well, used no, it well no but they've been like we can fold space of course but they've been discovering a bunch of shit right now just that because they, mathematically like, you can fold space doesn't mean you could build a machine that does it I mean theoretically anything is possible ugh your endless optimism <laughs> is exhausting it's okay it's what I'm here for baby um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny that you bring some of this up because there's yeah. a physicist named uh, Frank Tipler who um, he's a, an expert in uh, general relativity, and he presented a theory called the Omega Point Theory that uh, shows that uh, what well, he believes it shows that the resurrection of the dead might take place at the end of the cosmos, like at the idea of like when the universe ends. Um, Okay, this is going to sound crazy. I have to read this just verbatim because it's too crazy. He posits that humans will evolve into robots, which will turn the entire cosmos into a supercomputer, which will, shortly before the big crunch, perform the resurrection within its cyberspace, reconstructing formerly dead humans from information captured by the supercomputer from past uh, light cone of the cosmos as avatars within its metaverse. Really tried to understand that. Uh, yeah, understand and I that. think even that. I mean, on, I mean, all of that is dubious. But even the idea that the universe will end in a big crunch is like dubious. I mean, that is a conversation that happens, which is like a certain I point. It was, but I think it's largely being supplanted by the idea of the big rip. That yeah. actually things will just space will just continue to expand to the point where gravitational forces won't overcome how much space is expanded, and everything will just drift away from everything else, yeah. including atoms. Yes. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think what it's trying to say is that like the robots will create another universe in some sort of form and that will be resurrected into that. True. But if that, but he's saying it takes place at the big crunch, but the, the big crunch will physically affect the computer that's housing that. And therefore everything would die anyway. Yes. So I don't know why it, I guess where I'm confused is why is it important that it's the end of the cosmos and not just eventually you can upload your consciousness to a computer or like that feels like the end of the theory. The other stuff feels like it doesn't contribute. <laughs> yeah. Unless he's just saying like that will force their hand to yeah, try maybe. to do something. Yeah, but, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is very funny. Uh, but there's a lot of kind of fusurists and, and people that kind of theorize about different versions of resurrection. Some of them are physical, you know, about uh, actually preserving your physical body. Some of them are metaphysical, like transferring your mind into a new host, whether that's digital or another body or, or things like that. Um, 
yeah, it's very interesting. It seems uh, it seems like there's some theory that quantum computing might be a, a little gateway into that and things like that. But it's extremely, uh, extremely uh, pseudoscience-y from what I gather. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I did not think we were going to go into uh, that. Well, I, I was trying to stay away from the zombie stuff because we already talked about yeah. like m- that magical sure, resurrection yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of thing. So I figured that might be a... Yeah. Well, with that, why don't we get into today's episode? Uh, we begin with the then. We're, again, talking about Apocalypse. We're talking about Four Horsemen. Yeah, I mean, it, it's on the brain. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, but we now we get a little bit of last week's episode. We could talk about famine in this yep. uh, intro. We see fa- uh, uh, bits of that. We've seen Some war and famine. And now we're getting discussions about death because we obviously remember that Lucifer had to, unlike with the other horsemen, had to do a bit of a dog and pony show to get death. Yeah. Um and and final and sort of the final shot is Dean from the end of last episode sort of wanting it all to be over with. Yeah. Feeling a bit um dismayed by everything. Totally. Uh we now go to the now. Uh on a stormy night, a fist punches through the soil in front of a gravestone which says Clay James Thompson. Yeah. And a man drags himself to the to the surface. Yeah, it's a good shot. Great classic zombie movie intro. I mean, that's the only yeah. way it could have started. Very kind of George Romero sort of vibes. And, Love uh, that. Yeah, Love that. It's so really much. cool. Um, we now then cut to Benny Sutton in his trailer, reclining with a cold one and enjoying a nature Watching program. nature documentary, which I guess, you know, people have interests in that. But for some reason, I was like. This guy? Yeah, and I was like, late at night, he's going to like watch something about leopards or some shit. He's not like watching NASCAR or like I know, or but... UFC or like or like Family Feud. Like he's not. It didn't feel like entertainment. It felt like and you know it's eleven thirty. I'm drunk. Time to learn. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it just it felt weird to me. I, it it that's not a good criticism because but it was just a thing that I thought. Sure. It, I think it was more about the like juxtaposition to what's about to happen, and that's the intention. Totally, totally. And I and I and I get that. Like again, like I said, this is it's not a good criticism, but it was a, a thought, thought I had, and I just had to get it out sure. that I thought it was weird. Sure. He suddenly hears what sounds like someone trying to open up his front door. Yeah. He gets up to check, but no, one, but sees yeah. no one. After he returns to his program. His door is violently flung open, seemingly by the storm. Yeah, and he just goes without arming himself to check again. Yeah, he's go. Uh, anything? No, didn't he, even like grab like a hammer or a knife yeah, or no. anything. Like, no. I mean, it is raining out. My my. I guess what I'm saying closed. is like he kind of deserves what comes. My next. my my doors in the house constantly are cl- closing because of like wind streams. I would and stuff. constantly bring something with me. Anytime you know how we talk about how I don't have a danger sense, yes, because I'm a six foot two, yes, 270 pound martial arts trained white man, yes, um, white, white man. The only exception to that is at home because I have an insane home invasion, home invasion complex, yes, not to the point where I haven't like booby trapped my house or anything, but I, I just something about. That is so deeply unsettling to me, the idea of, like, that safe place not being safe. That, like, if I hear a weird sound, I check it out. If I heard it twice, I'm grabbing whatever I can use as a, a weapon. I've got, I've got like, a, a decorative, like, fake axe. I would take that. I would take a... I would, I've done it before where I go, like, if I'm downstairs and I hear something out of the door, I grab a big-ass knife and hold it and go check the door. Like, I... <laughs> I'm ready for a fight. I um, I I'm surprised you don't actually have like martial arts tools at the ready. I mean, most of those are back in Ontario, yeah. but also those are blunt weapons. I want to make sure I'm going. Yeah, for sigh. The... Yeah, I mean, yeah, mine aren't sharpened because you... for it's for play, yeah. for training. It's not for play. <laughs> have some fucking respect. It's when you play you, with your friends. You friend. play you karate. Yeah. <laughs> You and your friends want to go play karate? Uh, yeah, no, I've totally just like held a like a knife, you know, put it up against your oh forearm kind of thing, and, like wow. check the door. God, remind me to not like come to your house at three a.m. 
Well, yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah, well, why why would I do that? <laughs> Again. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I um I have a baseball bat under my bed. That's sort of the big thing sure. that I have. Well, that makes sense. You sure weren't using it for baseball. No, I like bought it for no that. sports. No, yeah. no, I, I bought it for home in- invasion. That's the yeah. only reason why I have it. I think that's wise. Yeah, I think I do not advocate for handguns and things like that. No. I don't believe in that. I do believe in. I don't even trust there myself. are things in your house you could use to defend yourself, and if it's late at night and you hear a sound you don't recognize, just have it at the ready. Yeah. Don't be like too skittish that you're going to stab someone by accident, but like be ready. Yes, I yes. advocate for that. Yes. Uh. But sufficiently spooked. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> yeah. The guy who uh, walked through a like a, a crime that uh, like you, I had to pull you back. It was fine. Yeah, because you know cops have never done anything where they hurt an innocent person. It's not a white man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's both like social justice and offensive at the same time. Yeah, because I'm just leaning in. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you're like, right? In the Hell grave. yeah. Yeah, we did it. Uh, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, sufficiently spooked, uh, he, he secures the door and then turns to find a man coated in mud silently staring at him. Yeah. Benny obviously recognizes this man and gasps in horror. Yeah. Fubble, fumbles to grab his shotgun. Should have brought it to the door. Yep. He aims the, at the man's face and pulls the trigger, but nothing happens. The man seizes Benny by the throat and strangles him. Yeah. That's the beginning of this episode. That's what you get. Also, Benny's trailer is, like, nowhere. Like, he's not in a trailer park. No, but, I mean, you can buy land and put a trailer I there. I know, but, like... That's a thing you could do here. No, like, I understand that, but it's like... You're, you're asking for it? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying you should answer the door with something ready. <laughs> You're really skittish. I'm not skittish. I'm ready. (laughs) Your honor. Do you not do the thing where if you're like in a space, you clock not only the exits, but like what are the things that aren't fastened down that you could pick up and use as a weapon? Because I do that in every room I'm in. In what scenario? And any. I'm just always ready. (laughs) I know like what I could reach. If I saw something happening at like different points I'd be like I'd have like a couple of seconds to get to this that I could you like and yet do you not do that and yet we watched two cops take down a criminal and we don't know if the person was armed and yeah. you were just like gonna boop a doop a doop walk through yeah <laughs> I don't understand your met your 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 barometer no I don't walk into rooms and worry about I'm, I'm defending not worried myself. I'm not afraid I just plan do you Constant. not do that? No, I don't oh. do that. Is that not a normal thing to do? No, I don't think it is. I do it all the time. That's not... What What happened to you? You know what happened to me, and I don't do that. I, I, yeah, well, I, I don't know. That's the martial arts training. I'm just always ready. Wow. All right. Well, Sam and Dean arrive in Sioux Falls. You want to know what I'd use in here to kill you? I <laughs> know. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I don't. I wouldn't kill you. Unless you made me. <laughs> Unless you forced my hand. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sam and Dean arrive in Sioux Falls. Yeah. Uh, SD, baby. Oh, yeah. What? What? Was, yeah, Sioux Falls, suck a dick. Wow, cool, man. Nice. <laughs> mm, nice. Nice. Uh, and pull up to Roy's diner. As Sam is on the phone making repeated attempts to reach Bobby at home. Yeah. Unsuccessful, they decide to proceed without him and join Digger Wells, already seated at a table. Yeah. Sam asks him to describe what he saw. And he tells them that... Oh, wait, he did have neighbors. Never mind. Oh, yeah. Yes. Very specifically, uh, Digger Wells. Yeah. Uh, Sam asks him to describe what he saw, and he tells them that he saw Clay Thompson climb into the window of Benny Sutton's trailer, saw him walk back out a short time later, and Benny was dead. Yeah. Dean produces a copy of Clay's driver's license to, to, to verify, and Digger confirms that although he was covered in mud at the time, it was definitely Clay that he saw. Yeah, it's like, I understand that he died five years ago, but yes. I know what I saw. Yes. Yeah. The boys exchange looks, and Sam asks if he is aware Clay Thompson died five years ago, and he said, yep. 
Uh, Dean already uh, a, le- a, a little leery of Digger since learning he made up his own nickname <laughs> asks if he's positive uh, Digger takes uh, offense to his b- uh, disbelief uh, tone uh, so Sam tries to keep the interview moving uh, by quickly asking him if he knows why Clay regardless of his vital signs would want to kill Benny and he says hell yeah Says, uh, uh, he's but, like, Betty's the one that killed him. It's like, they say it was a hunting accident, but so like, called hunting accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he reckons that Clay came back to serve up some payback. Uh, Sheriff Mills enters the diner. I completely forgot this is the one, this was the one, and it happened. I was like, oh, Jody, and my wife was like, Who's Jody? and I was like, You don't understand. Holy shit, she looks good, easy. I mean, yes, obviously. She looks so good in this episode. I mean, I like the later sort of change to her look, but like, oh, and yeah. I think like, especially because I'm like, hey, that's that's around my age. Oh yeah, and she's just got no time for bullshit, and that's a big, yes, sir. That's a big yes for yep. me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Can you just like be slightly disinterested in me and uh, like make me seek your approval? Yes. Yeah, I'm asking to be nagged. I guess. Yes. Oh. Oh, no. Look, we're a couple of some bitches. That's okay. True. Hell yeah. Uh, and uh, Oh, I love Jody. Yep. She's on her cell phone instructing someone named Owen to choose an apple versus a cupcake. Yes. Uh, so, funny thing. Sheriff Mills was Jim Beaver's character's name on Harper's Island in 2009. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Digger sees her walk in and they make eye contact. He he mutters, uh-oh, Fargo, as a heads up to the boys as she approaches their table to introduce herself. Yeah. Uh, she inquires about what FBI agents Dorfman and Niedermeyer, um, which are uh, both main characters in National Lampoon's Animal yeah. House. Uh, Sorry, hang on. The guy in the diner calls her Fargo. Yes. But they are... They live in, they're in South Dakota where he lives. And she's just a female cop. Does he just call any female cop? Like, there's nothing else about her that evokes Fargo other than being a female cop. If anything. In a Dakota. We get a character later on that's much more Fargo. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. It's So I was, yeah, it's just funny that the guy's like, like, that's a joke that maybe Dean should make because it's like, well, we're in Dakota. Yeah. And yeah that, but, yeah. like, this guy lives there. So any female cop, you just go, Fargo. Yes, exactly. It's very I think funny. so. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, inquires what he, what the, what the boys are doing with Digger, uh, who chimes, they're doing their job. They believe me. Yeah. Uh, the sheriff is incredulous uh, that the FBI believes a dead man committed murder, but Sam assures that they are simply asking just a few questions. Yeah. And he gets to the, like, well, I want to talk to your supervisor. And Sam pulls out the card. You know, we've seen this move before. Love this. Hands it to Jody. We see the call go through. We see the bank of phones at yep. Bobby's place. Bobby picks it up. Goes, this is ancient Agent Willis. Yes. And Jody goes, is this Bobby Singer? And he goes, uh, no. <laughs> this is Agent Willis. <laughs> and hangs up the phone. It's amazing. Yeah. And she immediately goes, oh, hmm. Uh, uh, and they go, you know Bobby Singer then, I guess. Her shutting down their lies it's the hottest thing turned me on in a way i'm uncomfortable with agreed uh yeah sorry mommy (laughs) i mean (laughs) i don't want to get too deep into it but it affected me agreed yeah She, uh, uh, she informs the boys that Bobby Singer is an ass full of drunk and disorderlies and mail fraud, and makes it clear that whatever they're planning is hereby ended. And I was like, "Yes, ma'am." Oh my god, end it. Do you want to get a drink? Yeah, yeah. End me. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they acknowledge her th- authority, uh, and Sam and Dean finally uh, go to Bobby's house. Yes, yeah. They find Bobby at home and give him an earful for not answering or returning their phone calls. That, and then they also make fun of him for, like, being washed. And, like, he's, like, Bobby has, like, a shirt tucked in. Like, he looks nice. And they're, like, did you, did did you, like, you smell like soap? Yes. I love that the thing they're making fun of is, like, you're not, you don't smell like shit. Yes. They're, like, (laughs) you're not a piece of shit like you normally are. Yeah, what's happening? We're worried. Uh 
uh, Bobby is unapologetic and says that he's been working on a way to stop Lucifer. The boys think that they are alerting him of the case in his own backyard, but he informs that he already checked it out in the Benny Sutton thing yeah. uh, and found nothing there. They beg to differ, pointing out that the witness saw dead Clay Thompson at the murder scene. And Bobby said he knows all about the witness, Digger Wells, and considers him a drunk. Sam tells him that they have also tracked lightning storms in the area that could be apocalyptic omens. And Bobby says, yes, such stormy weather is not unusual for South Dakota in February during like lightning storm season. Also, is that lightning storm season? I didn't I didn't find anything specifically about that. I can't imagine that's true. I mean, it's the be, middle but... of winter. That's not really lightning storm season. Yeah. You need it to be hot enough to put more humidity yeah, in the air. Yeah. And for and the heat and spring and the yeah. hot cold cycle is the thing that makes a thunderstorm. If it's just cold, even if it's humid, that's why you don't get lightning storms in winter. Yes, unless winter ends early there, but which doesn't seem in the Dakotas. That's what I mean. It doesn't seem. <laughs> uh, when they ask for his thoughts on who killed Benny, he says Bunny Sutton was a seasoned sob whom uh, a significant number of living townspeople in Sioux Falls would have been willing to cap. Yeah. Uh, Bobby's final take on the case is that the boys have wasted a tank of gaffes in pursuing it. Dean, not satisfied with the state of the case, despite Bobby's offerings, stops at St. Anthony Cemetery on the way out of town. Yeah. He convinces Sam that they should explore the possibility that Bobby could have been wrong. Yeah. He's like, we'll just pop in. And if there's nothing here, we'll just then we're fine. Leave, we'll leave town. Whatever. Yeah. It's fine. They seek and find the grave of Clay Thompson and yeah. agree that it looks freshly overturned despite being five years occupied. Definitely. When they excavate and discover Clay's body is not there, they are even more confused. Yep. They break into now the Thompson residence under cover of darkness to search for clues. Clay appears and tries to take Dean out with a baseball bat, believing he is a burglar. Very funny. Dean yeah. overpowers him ter and terrified Clay begs him not to shoot and declares there's money in the safe. Just a zombie being like, excuse me, sorry, no, don't. Well, this is the interesting thing. You know, we're talking about, we talked about resurrections. Yeah. And stuff like we're talking about the rising of the dead. Yeah. B but these people aren't being brought back to life. They're undead. They're, they're zombies. Right? Like, it's not like when... Dean comes back from hell and he's alive again, right? It's not like when Sam died and then was brought back to life. Yeah. These people are just being reanimated. Yeah, exactly. You know, like they have their memory, they have all that stuff, but like theoretically their souls are getting put back in them. Possibly. This is one of those question marks. It's, I, I, I would argue probably not based on what ends up happening with them and sure, yes. what we know from later seasons sure, about that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. But, um, but I do think it's interesting that there is this distinction, even in the world of supernatural, where life and death are these kind of flexible things, that yeah. there's a difference between being brought back to life and being uh, and being resurrected. Like, yeah, yeah. these resurrections are reanimations. These are zombies, right? Yes. Because they're they're he you could see it. he's pale, like his yeah, flesh is dead. Yeah. He's just not rotting. You know, yeah. like it's it's a very weird situation. Totally. Aware that Clay Thompson is dead and missing from his grave, but confused by his cowering position, Sam asks who he is just to verify. Clay is also confused when he asks his name, so then wants to know who they are. After Sam sputters, um, FBI, Clay realizes, oh my god, this is about Benny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love a zombie being afraid about a death yeah and he's like take me to jail yeah uh he's like i definitely did it yeah i uh, fully killed him he he couldn't let him get away with shooting him in the back clay is not what they have come to expect from the undead as he's behaving relatively normally and actually yeah. says that he's not sure whether he is dead or not yeah yeah don't wake my family up then like at one point his wife comes down he's like it's okay honey and she's just like all right like she's fine with him being there like yeah yeah he's just like no weird. it's because of benny something weird is happening in town yeah yeah he says he'll go with them to jail but asks that they go quietly so they don't wake the kids yeah uh, it's so weird. Uh, uh, Dean pulls a gun in preparation of a zombie kill, but Sam stops him uneasy about shooting a soccer dad on the head. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I mean, it's that thing where it's like, I know he's technically a zombie, but like this kind of feels, this would feel more like an execution than yes. like a monster hunt. Exactly. You know, <laughs> like. 
They head out the door and are confronted by Sheriff Mills. Yes. Uh, uh, responding to a 911 call. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, you put your guns away. And, like, she's not phased by seeing this guy. And no. They're like, but he's, and she's like, yeah, so? I, you can't just wave guns around in my town. Yeah, zombie There's, or not. There are laws here. Yes. Not natural laws, mind you. But yes, <laughs> yes, yes, but man's law. Uh, Clay apparently offended that the federal employees were planning to shoot him, angrily points out that he is a taxpayer. Yeah, which uh, I mean, I do like, I like what they're playing for comedy in here. He's <laughs> like a zombie who's... <laughs> He's like, I'll go to jail. I'm a taxpayer. So funny. He's like a suburban zombie. It's, yeah. it's so good. Um, oh, what was that show where the lady was like a suburban? Uh, was it uh, Drew Barrymore? Was that well, she wasn't show? a zombie though, was she? I wasn't that she just was. that she was a cannibal? Oh, I thought it was that she was a zombie. Oh, really? Yeah. I oh, I didn't thing. realize that. I just thought it was that she was a cannibal. No, I think she was a zombie. The Santa Cl- Clarita diet. Yeah, yeah. She was a zombie. I think so. Huh. Could be wrong, but I'm... I'm well, that wrong. I didn't realize. I obviously haven't watched it. Yeah. Uh, also, the one with the... Um, she's a, a mortician. There's that... Song. Eye zombie. Eye zombie, yeah. yes. That is the eye zombie one. Yeah. Uh, Sam and Dean can see uh, Bobby and Sheriff Mills now calmly uh, conversing from their jail, jail cell and are confused as they were under the impression that she hated him. Yes. Did they fuck? Like, is that the idea? No. Okay. Not yet. Uh, I mean, yes. Uh, when they question him about it upon their release, he says that she did hate him until five days ago. Oh, that's right. Okay. When dead people started rising. Yeah, because he's been like consulting, Useful. you yes. know, like on on this happening. Yeah. Yeah. They are shocked that Bobby knew about the zombie situation and miffed that he has no compunction about lying to them. Uh, Bobby says that he didn't lie. He just told them that there wasn't a case there because there isn't. Not for them. Yeah. Bobby suggests that not all zombies are the same. Hashtag not all zombies. Uh, and has uh, has them return home uh, with him to meet his wife, Karen. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that previous episode, whenever that was, we know what happened with Bobby and his wife. It was part of the then yes. that we got for this episode where she was, you know, whatever it was years ago, she was possessed by a demon and Bobby had to kill her. Yes. Not the same actress, though. Carrie Ann Fleming was cast as Karen Singer since Elizabeth Marlowe, who had played her in season three, Supernatural Dream, A Little Dream of Me, was pregnant at the time. Right. Uh, the producers thought it would be too weird even for Supernatural to feature a pregnant zombie. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which, you know what? I mean, good for them. They've been pulled. They finally pulled back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fleming had previously played a small role in season two's Supernatural episode in, in my time of dying as the dying nurse oh sure yeah uh dean says your new wife eventually asking and he's like cautious. my dead wife yes uh when dean was nice <laughs> put her on nice yeah <laughs> she's nice cold anymore uh, no. <laughs> I thought you niced her. <laughs> oh no! Uh, when Karen is out of earshot, Dean and Sam go- gonna deport her to the afterlife. Gonna call nice. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I don't like that one. No. Yeah. No, that one upset me. Was the whole town attacked by nices? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Typical us. Yep. Overdid it. And then ruin it. Yep. Dean and Sam give Bobby the business about cohabitating with his undead wife. Yeah. On the defense, Bobby says, of course, he tested her in every way that he knows. Yeah, so you think I'm an idiot? Yeah, she has no reaction to salt, silver, holy yeah. water. It's not a demon possession. It's not a... He's just like, she's just back. Let me have this. Yeah. Karen is also an atypical zombie uh, in that she was cremated. Uh, yeah. Her ashes were buried back. in the cemetery. Yeah. Um, as um, as all of the other returned citizens, uh, Sheriff Mills, little boy Owen, among them, Sam Which helps explain why she's kind of been chill about it all. Yeah, it's one thing for her to know it's happening; it's another for her to be like, "And this is just how we live here in Sioux Falls." Yeah, uh, and, and that explains it. Yeah. Uh, Sam asks about the omens, and Bobby admits the aforementioned lightning storms did, in fact, coincide with the start of the rising yeah, of the dead. At which point he should have said, "Cause it's winter, you fucking idiots." <laughs> 
uh, and weren't simply uh, seasonal as he claimed earlier. Yeah. Although there's also not really snow on the ground here for February in Sioux Falls. Yeah, I know. It's I very know. obviously Vancouver. Uh, it's very obviously Vancouver in March. Yes, uh, which is very funny. Uh, and th- and through the fire stood before me a pale horse, and he that sat atop him carried a scythe. And I saw since he had risen, they too shall rise, and from him and through him. The boys then realize they are dealing with a horseman. Death. Death. And tell Bobby that it leaves no doubt about what they have to do. Yeah, and he's like, uh, no thank you. Uh, Dean raises a, a hand to rub his face in annoyance and says, well, it must be a Thursday. Uh, they had already come up against two horsemen in the previous Thursday night shows. The first uh, five seasons of Supernatural originally aired on a Thursday night before moving to Friday right. night in the sixth next season. So oh. uh, so them saying it must be a Thursday is also a joke because that's when the episodes air. That's cute. I like that. Bobby protests that Karen doesn't remember anything about being possessed or him having killed her, revealed in Dream a Little Dream of Me, yeah. and has no scars or wounds. Uh Sam refers to Bobby's hometown as a po down town like Sioux Falls. Yeah. Uh, Sioux Falls is actually the largest city in South Dakota with approximately 160,000 people. I mean, that's still a very small town. It's like, I mean, we're one to talk, but. Yeah, I mean, 160,000 people isn't nothing, no people. but it's also like not. You know, yeah, I'm from Windsor where there was like 300,000 people. Like, yeah, I grew up in Cambridge, Ontario, which was 130,000. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty small town yeah, feeling, yeah, yeah. but I also right next door to Kitchener Waterloo. Like that region has like 700,000 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's basically a city. Yeah. You know. Uh, he points out that Revelation just says that the dead rise during the apocalypse. That, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It could I even mean, turn out to be a good thing. If maybe the one is, good thing that comes out really of it. This is really Bobby stretching. He's like, I the apocalypse doesn't say it's bad. It's like, well, is it part of the apocalypse? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's like, <laughs> Dean looks at him earnestly and asks what he would do if he was in their position. He sighs and admits that he would do the same thing that they have to do. Nevertheless, he tearfully begs them to leave Karen alone, yeah. which, God, it's such a fucking well-performed I moment. get it. Yeah. But it's also, it's like, I, I do think he plays, you know, Jim Beaver is playing this very well where he's like, he is doing the irrational thing because of and the, he recognizes because that of the emotional states, but he he's like, I I know. But, like, what do you want me to do? Yeah, my wife is back. Like, but, I like, can't. L- just let me have this. Yeah. There's almost a sort of resigned thing where it's like. I know where this leads. He never says it. He doesn't admit it. But he's like, if I die, I die. But, but at least I like, die by my wife with my wife. Just yeah. let me have this. Yeah. yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, later at Roy's, the boys decide Bobby's living situation is untenable. Untenable. Yeah. Um. Dean declares that he's he's going to be there if the Bride of Frankenstein should attempt to make a meal of Bobby. And returns and stakes a position in the salvage yard in full view of the house. Yes. Karen startles him suddenly while he's on watch. Uh, very, like, undine like yeah. It's like, just boop, 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 boop. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and She's she, like, hello. Yeah. Uh, I do like the the shot is initially like her looking like she's almost a full zombie and then she like gets a big smiley face yeah and um, requests that he join her in the house and he redu- re- re- reluctantly agrees um I will say okay there's a moment where she goes uh, uh he goes like I don't think Bobby will like that and she goes it'll be our little secret and <laughs> I also I I know that she's uh, undead but like I don't know I don't know so I, I... It's a lot of really hot ladies being like, I I am increasingly worried about this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm worried about us. Um, I don't think it's good. <laughs> anyways, as Bobby naps in the next room, yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes he wishes <laughs> she was you. <laughs> <laughs> My dead wife's in the The next next room. room. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) It's really good to hear you. (laughs) 
Sounds like Dean. Oh, coming from the lips of a zombie. <laughs> Saying my name. This pie is so sweet. And pie. <laughs> We have so many versions of this. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, We're going to make a just covering of that song, I, a Supernatural a crossover. A full album, album of just <laughs> Lips of an Angel covers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, she offers Dean more pie. There are so many pies in this room. She's been making pie all day. Yeah. I fucking know it. Yeah. So we can get to skip past it. Must have, must have mayo, y'all. Uh. <laughs> like a <laughs> top for sandwich segment, y'all. Oh, sluts. sluts. <laughs> Hit him. One, two, three, go. Ha <laughs> ha. It's your boy, Jason Derulo. <laughs> It really does hit the word slut pretty hard. Really hard. It's pretty aggressive. Yeah. Uh, it's the Supernatural Sandwich segment. Uh-huh. A pie is not a sandwich, of course. No, that's silly. But, uh, you know, Karen is her name? Yeah. I forgot. Sorry. I was just too caught up in other things about her. Um, <laughs> she's been, basically, we learned she's been in the kitchen the whole time. She's just like... Got a real joy of cooking. Bobby says that, uh, like, she's hum. She hums when she cooks. He thought yeah. he'd never hear it again. All this kind of stuff. And so Ugh. we're in this. We're in the kitchen. This scene with her and Dean, and she's been in the kitchen so much. It's like covered in pies. Yeah, popping fresh out the kitchen. So my question: I'm a rolling that dough. Oh, uh, listen, got every zombie here wishing. <laughs> um, there's a lot of home cooking going on. Uh -huh. What is the best sort of homemade sandwich you've ever had? At someone's house or or one that you've made. So not at a restaurant. We're not counting anything. Sure. To, what's the best homemade sandwich you've ever had? Hmm. I, uh, um, there was a time in my life where I would say my favorite meal or food was a sandwich. Sure. Like just a straight up like homemade sandwich. I fucking love it. Sure. Um, I just don't really eat a lot of bread anymore. So it just, it doesn't really come up as much. And yeah, I try yeah, to yeah. like. I, I'm punished whenever I eat bread, so fair enough. I, yeah. I do eat. I do have some gluten free bread, and so I will make that. And and I think like one of my favorites. Like I have basically three top sandwiches. One is like a straight up just like a, a turkey uh, on like a like a super seedy like bread that's like got a bunch of fucking shit. Yeah, like it. a bread that like sells drugs under the overpass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, a really real, seedy bread. A real seedy bread. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, with just like red onions, mayo, like yeah. uh, uh, some sort of like fucking dank green ass lettuce. Easy. Uh, uh, yeah, tomatoes. Yeah, dank green ass lettuce. Yeah. A normal thing to say. Yeah. Uh, that's like definitely one. Uh, the what other one. What strain of lettuce is this? <laughs> uh, it's yeah, it's a uh, uh, kale. Uh, easy, easy. Um, <laughs> arugula is actually my favorite right now. Um, arugula has a very specific place. Love it. I mean, you love that arugula salad I made for you. Today. I like arugula. Yeah, but it, again. It's very specific use. Sure. I think. Uh, the next one is uh, 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 like a, a, a ham sandwich. Love that. Uh, like, but like with actual ham, like cut from like either a spiral or yeah. from like an actual like big fucking. That's a big leftover type sandwich yeah. from growing up. Love that. Yeah. You're gonna hate this part, but I want uh, met melted cheddar cheese on there, uh, mm -hmm. mayo's and tomato. Idiot. <laughs> Anyways, melted cheese is, is a weird thing to not like. Maybe the dumbest person. Ever. You like cheese, but not melted cheese. That's I a don't weird take. Like, I, yeah. Well, actually, I shouldn't even say I don't like melted cheese. I don't like stringy cheese. Sure. Anyways. Uh, if the cheese melts and then cools off a little bit, that's, ooh. Mm. Yeah, we had melted, sort of melted mm. cheese curds yesterday. That's probably the level of melt that you're looking for. Certainly not more than that. Yeah. Anytime I see a thing on TikTok where they they just like load cheese on, they pull it apart. It's oh, all yeah. stringy. I'm so like, good. I I would vomit. Wow, that's crazy. I it's disgusting. Wow, cheese is meant to be hard. <laughs> At least one of us can be. Yeah, someone should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and the final <laughs> sandwich is a fucking breakfast sandwich. Sure. I love a breakfast sandwich. Yeah. Um, lately, it's been with like, like I like it just a straight up white bread. Uh, I'll take it with, uh, for for specifically for breakfast sandwiches, I use a gluten-free bread called a Char. It's like C-H-A-R with like an umlaut over the A. Really, really great gluten-free bread. Probably the only one that I really like. Um, but in there, I take like a, now I use a turkey one, but it's like a, like the breakfast sausage patties. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want that on there. Again, that's the sort of scenario where I want to slice tomato, some mayo. Uh, maybe I'll do cheese. Not really necessary, but I want some hot sauce in there. Yeah. Egg. You're good to go. Do you know what sandwich I used to love as a kid? Tell is me. We would... Uh, I've, I have not seen them in stores in years. Okay. But my dad would buy these... Um, this You know, like the sort of like bag packages of corned beef? Like sure. the Shopsies things? Yeah, it's yeah. like... It's like a plastic package, almost like what, um, what like pepperettes would come. Yeah, in. yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, but yeah. they were designed that you would just put the package on. You the would bread. just boil the package. Oh, like in the package. Oh, I didn't know that. So they were these shopsies things of corned beef, and they all had like individual portions, sort of thing. But you just boil the package, and then take that out, open it up, and it would be ready. Get that. Get a Kaiser roll. Get a really nice. Uh, like honey, <coughs> honey Dijon. Ooh, could maybe add, you know, onions or things like that. Um, and basically, just we would just have these like nice thick Kaiser roll corned beef <coughs> sandwiches. That is such like a comfort food thing for me. Yeah. One of my favorite things we would have at home. We would not be fancy about it, you know. <laughs> we wouldn't put even like a tomato or any like. It was like just about having that. And I haven't seen those like packages. Of, I I know you can get corned beef in other forms, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I haven't seen those packages in so long that I've just like I get corned beef if I go to the deli or something like that. Sure. But I'd never buy it for home because I kind of like it doesn't feel right. Really, it's like I, I have such like a emotional connection to like that specific thing. Wow, that I I've never just bought it even just as a deli meat to have at home because I feel like I should have the. The ritual of that thing and sure. like put the package in and stuff like that. I, I fucking miss it because, but it was always like the, it was specifically the Shopsies one, but I haven't even seen off brand ones of it. There's, I don't know if like maybe the FDA was like, hey, a lot of that plastic's leaching into the, we probably, like, I don't know if it was like, there's a reason that they don't make it like that anymore or something, but possibly. Yeah. Uh, there's only one place I like a corned beef sandwich, and it's this one place in Windsor that is like, that's their specialty. Sure. They, they, it's a deli, but like, that's like their big thing. I like the corned beef at the deli in town. Actually. Yeah, I haven't had it there. It's um, pretty solid, but that's typically the only place on I've a marble ever had rye. It. Ooh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Well, there you go. That's the Supernatural Sandwich segment. And we're all better for it. Hit him. I need to go to the washroom. <laughs> uh, so, back with Mommy Karen. <laughs> Zami. Oh, whoa. Zami? No. Zami? Mom-Z? No. Zami? No. Momsby? <laughs> I think we're getting further from it. Yeah, hell yeah. More like a momby. Oh, right. That's what it is. Yeah, there it is. Uh, all right. So, uh, um, uh, as Bobby sleeps in the next room, she offers Dean uh, more pie, uh, which she is making constantly as she got back and doesn't sleep. Yeah. She tells Dean that she knows he doesn't trust her and that she, he's trying to protect Bobby. Yeah. She's aware that he and Sam and Bobby are hunters and knows she is one of the things that they hunt. Yes. Uh, Dean says that she must also know Bobby is like a father to him and Sam, and she acknowledges they were never let uh, that, that that they would never let anything happen to him. Yeah, she reveals that she remembers her possession. Yeah, she's like been hiding from Bobby yeah. that she remembers being possessed. She remembers him, him killing, killing her. her. She yeah. remembers 
you know, being brought back. And he and she can see that uh, in his eyes, he's racked with guilt about it. Yeah. Uh, Dean asks why she doesn't just tell him that she remembers everything, and she suggests that if he'd ever been in love. He would understand that uh, as his wife, she's trying to protect him too by bringing him peace, not more pain. Yeah. With the list of the returns. She's kind of pointed about it. She goes like, you've never been in love. Yes. Which like, I mean, yeah. Jesus. Uh, with the list of ret- of the returned town people that Bobby started, uh, Sam goes on a walk about the town and spies Sheriff Mills spending quality time with her son and husband. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Oh, so that, you know, know, like the idea of like having lost a child and then it comes back and you go like, oh, they're going to have to take that from her. Like even just in that moment, I'm like, oh, yeah. He then visits the Jones residence and sees the blood on the fl- front doorstep. When no one answers the door, he enters calling out Ezra Jones and finds a finds a very elderly, ill woman lying in bed with a rattling cough, mentioning for him to come closer. Yeah, she keeps like beckoning like with her hand and he's like, any chance you could tell me from there? Yeah, cause it's like, like a very, I've seen a horror movie. It's a very funny moment where Sam is also like, this is bad. He, yeah. He's even saying like, this is really, this sounds badly, this sounds badly. Like as he moves yeah. forward. My wife was like, don't do it. No. <laughs> we all know. She suddenly throws him onto his back. Nice. And Ooh. he lands uh, near a man's body that appears to have been chewed on. Yeah. Uh, the woman jumps on top of Sam. Nice. Uh, shrieking and slobbering. Nice. As she <laughs> tries to take a bite yeah, out of him. Yeah, she spits on his face. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, After a struggle to yeah. pull his uh, gun from underneath him. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, he he unloads in her mouth. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Both episodes. <laughs> Ugh, what kind of weird energy? Yeah, and it know. hit the ceiling. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Sam and Dean return to Bobby. We're, we're bad. Yep, we're not bad. We're not good. That's for sure. No. Uh yeah, they return to Bobby's and question him about the old lady Jones, and he tells them that she was the first one to come up. Yeah, so it's like, okay, well, if that happened to her, then I, it's only a matter of time that yeah. these other people are going to start. When Sam reports that she's now the first to go bad, Bobby nonchalantly replies that she was always a nutty broad. He, yeah, I mean, again, Bobby's really stretching. He's like, doesn't mean they all will, right? right? And Dean's like, yeah, does that level of nutty uh, exemplified by eating her su- husband's stomach? Yeah, and he's like, no, got uh, me there. Uh, they tried to convince him that his judgment is skewed. The undead are starting to turn, and they all need to stop all of them. With that, Bobby draws his gun. Yeah, and he's like, uh, you boys no longer welcome here. Get off my property. Yeah. Don't make me ask twice. And he declares that... It's it... a very kind of sad sort of thing. So yeah. You can see, I, you know, Bobby also knows they're right. Yes. But you can just see he's just hurting too much. To... Yeah. When he even says, if she turns... Yeah, I'll deal with it my way. I don't need you guys here, like, meddling and making this worse than it is. Yeah, he cocks thing. the gun and says there won't be a second warning. Yeah. Okay, Daddy Bobby. Jeez. All right. I... What? How dare you sexualize Bobby? I'm sorry. It's okay for all of the undead women, but... Uh, 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 What? Move on. (laughs) They leave in stunned silence and regroup in the Impala just outside of the gate of the salvage yard. Dean can't believe Bobby's gone crazy enough to go full metal jacket on them, but decides that he is still has to go back and take Karen out. Yeah. And And so Sam's like, fine, I guess I'll hunt the other 18 yes. zombies in town thank you dean yeah and I dean's mean, like yeah all right he just sam's like that sounds easy and dean's like yep sam's plan <laughs> is to go into town and try to convince the sheriff that the zombies will soon start eating their way through the town yeah to get to get uh, jody's help yeah at the mills residence jody is trying to comfort her son who is running an extremely high fever and complaining of being hungry. Yeah, and they're calling the doctor, and they're like, his fever's 111. But then he's like, I'm so hungry. I'm well, so you know that people hungry. die if they I, I, anything past, like, 105 or something? Or like, but no, also, it's these like, people are undead, remember? Yeah. So the fact that there's, like... Yeah, if you hit 108, you have a 50-50% chance of dying. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So... Good to, uh, good to know. Because you basically at 107, you start having multiple organ failures and brain damage. Huh. Which is crazy because it's like, it's it's a, it's a only a few degrees. Like, well, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, crazy. So um, 
She takes over her. Uh, uh, she takes over her husband's Sean's uh, phone call with her doctor and sends him in with food for Owen. Husband goes in there. At the singers, uh, uh, Karen collapses in the kitchen. Bobby notes she's burning with a fever, but she tries to reassure him that it's just a bit of dizzy uh, because she needs something to eat. Yeah. As Jody continues with the phone uh, uh, on the doctor, she hears a loud noise in the living room. Yeah, and she walks out there, and there's a big pool of blood on the floor, and behind the couch, the zombie son has killed and is eating the dad. So fucked up. Yeah, it's pretty... It's, he starts approaching Jody. It's pretty messed up. Yeah, uh, it's, this kid actually playing it very well. Yeah, really good kind of creepy, like zombie yeah. kind of vacant. Yeah, expression. Uh, yeah, Sam actually, the, the kid is really good at yeah, selling this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just as he starts pro- approaching Jody, Sam bursts in uh, and forces her out the front door. She refuses to leave until Sam convinces her that Sean is dead. Yeah, husband. and then you know they're outside, and he's like. I need your help. This is happening everywhere. Sheriff, you're the sheriff. Be the sheriff. Can you please, you know, get your head in the game? And she goes, yeah. And then he goes, just give me a sec. And Sam goes in and we hear the gunshot and he he deals with it for Jody. Crazy. It's bad. Crazy. It's pretty upsetting. Yep. Uh, Not graphic. No. Very upsetting. Very upsetting. Yes. Uh Bobby and is, Jody, uh, yeah. the actor uh, Kim Rhodes, oh, plays it incredible, amazing, yeah, uh, in general. But she's really, really good in this. You know, there is that kind of like the sheriff thing of like I just have to deal with the job, yes. but then also like you know, just again, she already she already lost her son. son. She has to lose him again and in not husband. a good way. And also her husband is now because she's also made this decision as the sheriff to let this thing yeah, be. It's her fault. It's also her fault. And like there's a lot going on that we don't necessarily explore in this episode no. that she is playing and she's doing a very good job of conveying totally. all of those kind of mixed sort of the hurricane of emotions. A hundred percent. Yeah. Now Bobby is at Karen's bedside as she weakly urges him to uh, admit that yeah. she is turning. Because she's like, I'm hungry. You know what this is. I know what this is. And he's like, yeah, you're fine. And she's like, I remember. She's like, I know what's happening. I, yeah. I remember it all. I know what you had to do last time. I remember the demon in me. I You, just, you just, need to do it again. And he's like, well, if you know, then you must know why I can't. Then. Yeah. And she's like, it kind of doesn't matter. You just sort of have to. She has another revelation as well that when she returned, there was a skeleton thin man at her grave site yeah. who told her to give Bobby a message. Yeah, which is like, oh, that's creepy. Yep. Um, Dean is kind of working his way into the yeah. house and he hears a gunshot and like, Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> and he runs in and, and Bobby has. He's holding the gun in one hand and Karen's hand in the yeah, other. It's really hard. <laughs> it's this so... is like a real like if, for an episode just about zombies and like all of this. It's a very like emotionally devastating sort of episode. Yeah. You know, Jody, we only just met Jody, but we're like oh, already Jesus. Like, yeah. Because it's that thing of like it's the hunter origin, right? Yeah. Even for Bobby, who has already been through this, he now has to do it again, right? And I think that's the worst part of this for this whole town is that they have to go through these things again. again yeah, you know. Um, and and I think it's um that hunter origin thing we talked about. You know, Dina said that their life is this like horrible crap show and stuff like that, and. It's all these things about destiny in that the worst undercurrent of it is not just that it might rob them of choice, but it's yeah. that if it was always their destiny, like then they did they have to be forged this way? I know. Couldn't they just be made a bit like the putting them through this thing is even more inhumane and unconscionable if it's about destiny. Because yeah. then it's like, couldn't they just be made to be the perfect vessels? Why? Why? Yeah. It's the cruel God, like cruel absent God sort of thing. And that's so present in this episode. We really see it with Bobby. And like, it, yeah, it's very a lot of emotional <laughs> devastation to go around. Yeah. Yeah. Or the man. Yeah. <laughs> and for Jody, I just. No, no, I just mean the man or the the path of emotional oh sorry yeah 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 sorry yeah <laughs> of course uh now sam and jody 
have gathered citizens at the police station and are passing out firearms. Yeah, and Sam's like, you got to hit you got headshot. It's the only way to do it. And someone, I love that someone is like, who are you? Yeah. Because it's like, it's that rare moment of like the audience as a character. And, this thing. and, and Sam like, goes, I'm, and a friend like, of Bobby's. I'm, a, I'm a friend of Bobby Singer. And they go, the drunk? And he goes, but I thought he was the drunk. Go, who told you that? Is it Bobby Singer? Yeah. <laughs> like, I do like that there's this sort of like, Again, the Hunter origin thing where it's like we know Bobby to be this immensely capable, very uh, helpful master hunter. Yeah. But because their role in society is basically a secret. Yes. I like that we get the others. Like the town is like, we do not respect junkyard Bobby. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> the crotchety dude who fucking yells at everybody and lives in a dump. He keeps calling us idiots yeah. and taking a drink. Yeah. Yeah. He's... Yeah. I, I, I do kind of like seeing the yeah, other side of it. Yeah. You know? I love that. But now we get the the episode changes into a different type of zombie movie. Yes. Almost a zombie video game. <laughs> yeah, a very kind of Dawn of the Dead sort of. Yeah. They entrench themselves in the station while Sam watches the front door. But nothing is happening. No. They're holed up at the jail. Just getting ready. To get ready and to be like, this is a safe spot. But like nothing is happening. No. Dean but and Bobby are cut... stalking the van. Yeah, they're throwing a bunch of weapons and stuff in the van and then... Um... Dean leaves to investigate a, a, a sound, a, a sound that they hear in the in the yard, and uh, uh, that's when we start seeing like zombies kind of just appear through the junkyard. I think this they use the set really well yeah. of this sort of like you just see like a whoosh, yeah. whoosh, or something move, and you realize all the zombies are after Bobby. You know, we've already had this thing of like, there's a message for you, Bobby, yeah. and then all the zombies are there, and it's like, oh, like Sam and Jody are protecting nothing. Because it's not about the town. It's exactly. about Bobby. And they all just start coming at him. Uh, and the, the boys are just like, like a video game shooting. Like great, you know, huge aim effects. skills. Huge, like a lot of like these headshots, the heads explode and the faces. So off, fucking so. awesome. I also just love the idea that it's like he's holding it like a guy in a wheelchair. Like, <laughs> yeah, like a there's, a, there's a couple of moments where Dean is almost like aiming Bobby. Bobby, which is kind of fun. I love that. Um, they have to get back inside the house, though. They get overrun, and he's like, oh, I'm almost out of ammo. And where's Bobby's like, ammo? Bobby's like, great, we've got lots. It's in the van. Yeah. Uh, uh, they hear zombie activity upstairs and are forced to retreat to the nearest closet, and they are starting- Is this the same closet that Bobby had yes. to hide in? Yes. In the, yeah, From yeah. his wife. That's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, it's fucked up. Uh, That's and, what I thought. Uh, Again, emotional devastation. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, they are forced to retreat to this closet and they start diving through the windows now, the zombies. Yeah. Uh, when Dean's declaration... And through the walls. I, this until is... the blood dripped down their balls. All, All these zombies crawl. All the... All eat, 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 oh, eat yeah. brains, eat, eat, eat. God damn it. God, this album's going to be fire. <laughs> Um, it's 11 tracks of Lips of an Angel and one uh, <laughs> to the window. Yes. <laughs> Love it. This, uh, the bonus track. this is a hilarious moment because Dean starts de uh, declaring that they're safe because the zombies are too idiotic to know how to pick a lock. Uh, and the, the zombies door. immediately start picking the lock. <laughs> and Bobby has some line of it like, do you ever get tired of being fucking wrong? I it's really love funny. that. I love that so much. Um the the zombies are so focused on getting Dean and Bobby that they fail to notice when Sam and Jody Yeah, and Sam arrive. just says like get down and they and they like mow down all these zombies. Again, good like exploding body parts yeah. and like really good effects sort of uh moment. Uh, I do kind of like we don't necessarily it is funny in the middle of an episode that is very much about the personal like uh emotional issues of these people yeah. coming back to life that we also just get a like zombies are cannon fodder we could do whatever the fuck we want to them. Yes. like blow them up cut yes. them to pieces sort of it's thing awesome. like we're kind of having the best of both worlds yes. a little bit in this episode that uh, and i sort of love that love it yeah uh we then cut to the next morning sam stands near a massive funeral pyre in the cemetery dean and jody arrive and report that there are no more zombies left to be found yeah Jody says the townspeople are traumatized, and a few who have, tr who have tried to alert the media have not taken been taken seriously. I do like that in this episode, unlike some other ones, it's like Sioux Falls just like knows about at least one yeah. kind of monster now. Yes. 
Which like changes must change everything. That's for the them. whole town. Now. Yeah, this is like Hunterville, USA. Now yes, because they all have gone through this. Experience. I do wonder. Yeah, uh, uh, we we get a little bit of sort of uh, uh, touching back into this town and and uh, other characters yeah. and stuff. But yeah, I do wonder if all of them just become hunters now. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's just very interesting. Uh, when uh, when Sam asks how Jody's holding up, she's not av- able to vocalize a response. Um, in Bobby's salvage yard, Sam and Dean join Bobby in front of uh, of the funeral pyre constructed for Karen, and Bobby sheepishly apologizes uh, apologizes uh, to them for his behavior. Yeah, um, Dean says a line that's like, "I don't know love from Shinola." Uh, which is a Dolly Parton song uh, yeah. of the same name, uh, playing uh, an old slang phrase for total ignorance. I don't know shit from Shinola. Okay. In 1877, the shoe polish Shinola came on the market and until the product line was dropped in 1960, was the most popular shoe polish in the U.S., Granted, shoe polish and excrement are both brown and semi-solid, but being unable to tell the difference uh, takes a whole new level of stupid. <laughs> right, I see. That's sort of where that line comes from. So, yeah. uh, uh, but Sam says no apologies necessary, and Dean offers. Does shoe uh, polish also come in like a rock hard foot log <laughs> log? That's not good, huh? <laughs> Isn't that no, <laughs> no, huh? Now yeah, I know you, know you don't go to the bathroom at the office. Yeah, I've told you. I will what never. bathroom can take that? I will never. Just a hole in the floor at your house I haven't seen. I mean, sometimes I walk over to the park to do that. I you have, When was the last time you did that? Last year. I haven't done it yet. Okay, I didn't yet. think you had, yeah. But I did it a bunch last year. <laughs> what changed? I don't know. For some reason, I was having more issues. <laughs> I'm sure we could like track what happened. Um, Dean offers that uh, at least the ordeal meant that he got to spend five more days with Karen. Yeah. Bobby laments that having to kill the love of his life a second time has only made things a thousand times worse. Yeah, he's like, I know what you're trying to say, Dean, but it's actually, it would be better if he hadn't come back. Yes. Uh, He tells them that he knows why death came to South Dakota, though. Yeah. He sent Karen back to deliver a message to him for helping them and being being one of the reasons Sam is still refusing to say yes to Lucifer. Yeah, so he's it's like a it's like a threat. It's like a Sicilian message yeah. from death. Yeah, he's not he's not sure if the intention was to take his life or his spirit, only that their goal was to remove him from the fight. Yeah. Uh Sam asks if he's going to be all right and Bobby doesn't answer. Uh yeah, which cuz that's a dumb fucking question. Yes, it was a really dumb question to just be like cuz cuz yeah, Sam's are like Are you okay, Bobby? He's like, "Yeah, of course I'm fucking great." Well, what he, he even says what is a, kind of worse, which is just like he's like, "Yeah, he's fucking tried to like take me into the fight." And Sam goes, "Yeah, but you're not like going to, right?" And he, he, like everything's fine he, now. He, he, <laughs> it's like, "Sam, you you're supposed to be the emotionally intelligent <laughs> one." Right. Uh but yeah, that was uh, fucking the dead men don't wear plaid. What did you think of that episode? Uh, it it is funny that it kind of does both sides of the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like we get a sort of very like just blow zombies apart sort of thing, but also most of the episode is about how a like two very specific zombies mm-hmm. are meaningful and important, and it's a brutal kind of personal, um blow to both Jody and Bobby to have to deal with it. Yeah. Um I I like this episode a lot. I was so pumped that it was the Jody in- intro to Jody. Yeah. Really, really loved that. Uh you know, obviously spoilers, but like Jody will be back. Yeah. Um I I like the the moments where this episode finds these kind of like the fun, th- like I'm a taxpayer. Yeah. Like, I, like yeah. I love the sort of irreverent zombie thing. Cause we even set that up the last time we saw zombies, right? Like, yeah, that they can talk and reason, even yeah, if yeah. there's this kind of uh, underlying scary undercurrent, yeah. they could be people. They're not just like, things. yes, I like that. I think the action and the effects are good. I think the performances are great. Bobby, Jody, uh, in particular, are yeah. great. I think Karen is uh, excellent. Really good. Uh, excellent. Really, really, I'm easy. Uh, really good. I think, though, generally, yeah. even though that's interesting, the idea of like the sort of like m- 
Sicilian message thing from death is interesting. I really do, starting to paint a very specific message of this guy. Yeah, I do kind of feel like this is a forgettable episode. Really? Like, I like this episode, but you, I was like, oh, I kind of like even as I was watching it, I was like, this barely rings bells. Really? Oh, I, I was like, I, I pretty much did not remember it. Wow. And and I think even after rewatching it, I'll also kind of be like, yeah, and like that. I guess that happened, but it feels less significant than other stuff that comes later that maybe deals with the same stuff or stuff that came earlier that deals with the same stuff. Like the more impactful Bobby episode is the dream a little dream one than this to me, even huh. though it's basically about the same emotional trauma for him. Sure. Um. I would give this a uh, 3.75 too many pies. Wow, really? Yeah. It's good, but I, I just don't think it's I don't think it's uh it's on par with other things. I love this episode. Really? Yeah, I love this episode. It does everything. It's funny, it's like emotionally impactful, the fucking level of acting that you get in there. Jody kills it in this episode. Sure. You get like more information about Bobby. It's also this like comedic tone about how like how how hunters are perceived within their communities, which yeah. is a really funny thing because most hunters are like nomadic, right? Sure. So yeah. being able to see the fact that Bobby is static yeah. gives the chance for the town to be like that guy's fucking cook. Yeah, yeah, love yeah. that. Um, uh, I love the like c- community coming together stuff. The fucking like everybody like shooting the zombies like such a big action, great shot action at the end of this episode. Yes, yeah, really, really well done. A bunch of fucking hot, strong women. Uh, Easy. Uh, no, <laughs> this is my time. <laughs> I will not y- yield my time, sir. <laughs> oh man, just wait till we get to Donna. Oh my god. Um, Jesus Christ, just. Instagram. Easy, uh, easy. Uh, I, uh, I, this episode is just is is one of my favorites. The fucking like uh, emotional impact of like having to kill her fucking own son, like her having to get her son killed again. I, like, I mean, I, I agree. You know, like we talked about it, but it, it's funny. Like, there are later Jody episodes that are way more impactful. Basically, about the same thing. But I'm comparing it to the rest of this season. I know, but I think even in this season, this is the most forgettable episode. What? Oh, no. Oh, no. If I'm comparing this to the previous episode, this is better than the previous episode. But but that I remember because I was like, because it was like about like the, the depiction of famine. Like, I remember that like imagery of him. Oh, I, I, and all that I, I think that shit. one's more forgettable to me. than this Oh, one. yeah. Yeah. I, I don't feel that way. I mean, but the reason I put it as high as I did is because this forgettable episode is very well executed, but it it's. It's, yeah, it's for just me, it's a nothing a, episode in my head. It's such like a knockout of the park for like a genre. Uh, like they hit zombies perfect in it's this. Interesting how far apart we are. Yes, yeah. I yeah. So I am gonna get give this four point five, uh, delicious Karen pie. Easy. <laughs> she made a lot of them. You can't phrase it that way. What do you mean? <sighs> it's Karen's pie. She had a lot of them. Easy. She's my care pie. <laughs> my Bobby's in the next room. Sometimes I wish he'd just shoot me in the head. So I could move, move on. on. <laughs> it's really good to eat your flesh. <laughs> Rather than maim, it sounds so sweet. Oh, boy. Wow, we were far apart in this one. We were. Holy we shit. We may never reconcile. <laughs> we weren't that far apart. We're 0. 0.75 apart from each other. Almost a whole point, though. Yeah. Uh, and that's the point. This, this is a segment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is- <laughs> that's the point with Richard. <laughs> It's our review it's title. It's a new segment. Or it's just the title of the yeah, It's a segment where I just make a point. Oh, okay. Do you mean the reviews? No. just, uh, just the, Oh, it's an on top of the thing. Just a point. Ugh, yeah. God. Do not make a song for that. Maybe a sound at most, but there's no fucking song. Just, I mean, it doesn't have to be long. 40 seconds, 50 no, seconds. No, 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 no. No. Keep it under a minute. No. But like 55 to 59 seconds. That's this a fine line. This is going to be the fun. fucking Doughboys drops. <laughs> We're begging in a year from now for them to be cut short. 
Uh, all right. Well, with that, uh, before we head out, we've got a note from a fellow hunter. Ooh. Uh, I think it's Nell. It's N E L E. Oh, or 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 Neil or Nelly. I'm not sure. One I'm of sorry those. that we're mispronouncing the version of those that's right. Yes. That. Uh, hey, I was just listening to season three, episode eleven, mystery spot, and was nearly crying when you talked about the German title. Uh, it makes sense in German since it plays on the German title of Groundhog Day. The title in German is "And Daily Greets the Groundhog," uh, a movie title often referenced in other st- series or movies. I love the international title section. It's always hilarious, and I started to think about it with every episode I watch. Wow, just wait until you get to the sandwich segment. You thought international titles was good? You're woefully unprepared for how much you won't like the sandwich segment. I mean, you're you're sitting on gold right now. Just to, just just soak it all in because the titles get You can only good. experience the sandwich segment for the first time once. <laughs> I envy you. Never hits as high as the first time. No, you're always going to be chasing that dragon. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, literally bending over backwards to try to fucking ham fist a segment into every episode. Yeah, that's why we're talking about ham fists. (laughs) Uh... Yeah, because he punched someone in the face. What's the last time you ate a yeah, ham fist? Yeah, what's a sandwich with a punch of flavor? <laughs> oh yeah, what's a... God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm going to find write that down. Oh my good, God, actually. no. Yeah. Uh, well, if you want to continue the discussion about uh, international titles or uh, the emotional devastation, this is the thing. is we're, we're getting close to the most emotionally devastating episode in the entire series, and maybe we'll be divisive there, too. Who's to say? Oh, I We can mean, have that discussion on our Discord. Yeah, interesting that you think that's the most important thing. Huh, that's interesting. Uh, funny that we would have this conversation right. now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, if you think our, our, our relationship is torn asunder by the review of this episode, just you wait. <laughs> <laughs> Two brothers. <laughs> At odds over a TV show. <laughs> Will they ever repair... Or has the damage been done? <laughs> Ghost facers. <laughs> Mondays at whenever you wake up. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> With the Chiron yeah. thing, us turning around slowly. Um, yeah, you can uh, you can go to patreon.com slash ghostfacers. For only $1 a month, you can join right. Angel Radio. It's our community Discord server. We're all getting to know each other. We're having a fun time talking about Supernatural, talking about other stuff. We're making friends, and it helps to support us. That's right, and that's the most important thing that you could do. Yeah, what's more important than supporting us? The yes. strangers that like the show you like. I, I, yeah, I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, one of the things that you can do to support us is uh, send us a, another email, much like that we got from N- N- Nelly. Yeah. Much oh. like that we got from Nelly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah Couldn't have said it better. That's right. With uh, uh, the single band aid uh, underneath their eye. Yeah. Just like Nelly. Yeah. Hey, if you want to go and write an email to me. <laughs> All you have to do is on your computer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's getting hot in here. So hot. So write all of your mail. Yeah, to Ghostfacers Podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> or reach out to us through our various social media platforms. Yeah, at Ghostfacers Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, or take I am here. tweeting so hard. I'm going to tweet this episode. <laughs> I am tweeting so hard. I'm going to tweet this episode. Yeah. <laughs> also, don't forget to subscribe so you can get our episode on your feed every single week. It helps us out, too. And if you want to keep helping us out, let's give us a five-star review on whatever platform you listen to the podcast. That's right. Let's take a screenshot if it's on, on Apple Podcasts or probably Facebook because we, uh, we won't get notified of those. But we'll read those reviews on a future episode. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, if you want to show the whole world how much you love this show, uh, not just in the digital space, you can do so by wearing our merch which you can buy at ghostfacerspodcast.com that's right uh, also we have another podcast yeah the Dr. DC podcast where we talk about DC comics and superheroes and if you like the way we talk about lore and stuff over here you might enjoy how we talk about that stuff over there it's almost identical if you think that we are <laughs> thirsty and offensive here <laughs> we're we're good boys here I, I, that's I mean we're o- good boys that's here that's only kind of true I mean after I feel pain. like you're better here 
You're I've worse never, here. I've never said to finger a ketchup <laughs> bottle on the other podcast. That's true, but I'm worse than you are worse. Right. <laughs> yeah. So on average. Yeah. yeah that's a worse I see place. What, I see yeah. what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it for this week. Say goodbye, bitch. Jerk.